going on, man? This is DK Artist coming at y'all live and direct from the studio. Okay, today I just want to get into a little bit about my artistic journey and how I derive my style from illustrative to realism with a twist. So it really all started back about, oh, 15 years ago. Uh, when I was in the military, I really didn't have a chance to do much drawing, so I had a pretty long hiatus from doing any type of drawing for about 15 years. So from about 1984 to about 90, 94, 98, somewhere around there, I started drawing again. But in between that time, I didn't have a chance to do any drawing whatsoever, very little. I think I remember doing a mural, wall mural for our battalion, uh, one of the battalions I was in. Uh, outside of that, that was it. I just want to get into it, man, and give y'all a little background. Um, this illustration here was basically my style at the time. You know, I started drawing again. I was using a uh, pen and ink and uh, watercolor with this one. And this basically was pretty much my style. You know, pretty straightforward, illustrative, colorful, things of that nature. So I did a lot of still lifes and things like that. You know, just getting back into the, the feel of drawing and all the aspects of it. Working with color, working with line. <clears throat> and I proceeded to continue to move along. This picture here of, uh, everybody knows this guy, Arnold Schwarzenegger, was actually done with a uh, pen and ink in the style or a technique called stippling, which is dots. So if I move this closer to the camera, you'll be able to see all the dots. Probably a few million on there. Stippling is one of my favorite techniques that I use occasionally now. Not as frequent as I used it back then. This work here is a, another one that I used, um, this stippling technique. So at this point here, I wasn't really, I was just more of getting back into the field, into the flow of just drawing on a regular basis. Uh, most people probably wouldn't have used pen and ink because if you make a mistake, that's all she wrote. So I guess you could say I was kind of brave in using that also. This is one of my favorite pieces. This is a home in the French quarters that I did. Way back in 2009, as you can see, it's another illustrative style, pretty straightforward, went to the quarters, took a picture, came back home, laid it out. These are the results. This is the results. So I was still moving in that illustrative style, still wasn't sure what my in style was going to be. Here's another one that I use uh, mostly watercolor with pen and ink. You can see a close up, you can see the ink work there. Another Yellow Moon restaurant out in the quarters. So I'm still doing a lot of experimentation with uh, color, pen and ink using watercolor, mixed media mix. Still trying to find my own voice. 
going to transition to a realism style after checking out this guy named J.D. Hillberry. It was actually another painter that I saw. Um, it was a Trump Lowell style, which means to fool the eye, right? And that really caught my attention. So this guy, uh, J.D. Hillberry, kind of sparked a little excitement and just a sort of like a fever for something new. I could tell that it was something that was going to challenge me in doing realistic work versus illustrative work. So I started to move in that vein and experiment with what it was to draw an object and to make it look real, make it look like a photo. Nowadays they call it hyper-realism. Before that it was photorealism. This is an example um, of what I was doing back then. It is uh, called the Cafe de Mars. Some beignets on a plate, glass of water, a napkin with the logo on it, and a cup of coffee. Cafe de Mar, of course, and a spoon. So this would be your traditional setup at the table if you were visiting New Orleans in the French quarters and you went down and ate at the Cafe de Mar. That's how the setup would be on your table. So going from this I realized that there was something that was churning within me and saying, hey man, I'm really getting into this realism thing and there's something that I started to gravitate to within that realism. And I found that my mind wasn't just satisfied with just doing realism, right? that I had to take it and make it my own. A lot of people do realism. Uh, nowadays, you see the hyper-realist artists, uh, a lot of portrait um, artists that do portraits. A lot of them are uh, hyper-realist artists, whatever they're drawing, and charcoal, pencil, graphite, or they're painting using acrylics, using oil, a lot of them do a lot of uh, photographs of, um, excuse me, a lot of profiles or pictures of people, faces, huge, gigantic, you know, cover the wall type artwork. So I said to myself, I didn't want to, I didn't want to fall into that. You know, I'm one of those cats that, you know, like to do my own thing. I mean, I'm an artist, so following what everybody else does, uh, never been my style, you know, never been my style. So I continue to refine my style. And this piece here is still real, a realism piece, but it's dedicated to the years that I grew up, right? I was born in the 60s. So we had a peace sign for the 60s and the 70s movement, the mood ring, and then we transitioned into the 70s with the afros, right, the afro pick. And this right here is, for all you old heads out there, a 45 disc adapter that you put in the middle of an LP. Y'all call it wax these days. And you were able to play a 45 disc on a turntable, right? There was a hole in it that this thing fit perfectly in the middle of. And it transitioned here onto the 80s with the cassette tapes, right? So I mentioned J.D. Hillberry uh, was a big influence of mine uh, going into my current style of doing realism with a twist. So J.D. Hillberry, I uh, took a look at some of his work online, you know, fishing on the internet, doing my, my study of my 
craft, right? And I'll say this, that if you're an artist and you're not studying other artists that do similar work or work within your medium, then you're doing yourself a disservice, you know? You really need to take the time to sit down on a daily basis and check out other artists and what they're doing. Because what that's going to do is allow you to broaden your mind and your horizon on different techniques, um, the way in which they create their work. You know, everybody has something to learn from everyone. You know, I don't believe that everything is, anything is truly original. I think it all derives from one thing that has been done before. You know, so even my style that I call realism with a twist is a twist on what's already been done. So I'm putting my flavor to it, right? So the first work that I actually did that was pretty similar to what J.D. Hilberry does, and J.D. Hilberry is an outstanding artist, um, Trump Lowell artist, I did this work here, and this is a, a print of it, so it might have the light shining on. This is a print of the first Trump Lowell, or rather realism with a twist work that I did. So here we have, uh, I call this man's vices, right? This represents women. So it's an advertisement for um, dating service, uh, for cork, drugs and alcohol, obviously a $5 bill represent money, and the dice represent gambling. So this is my first attempt. Like I said this is a copy. It's not the original. And I continue to progress on from that style. Excuse me. <clears throat> this is my next piece that I did. And you can see the transition here. The next piece I did was entitled Tea Time. And in Tea Time, you can see, I mean, it's pretty literal. You know? yeah, that's what cracked me up. I mean, I, sometimes I do work that's the title itself is self-explanatory once you look at the piece. So you have a tea bag, you know, glass cup, and the watch represent time, right? Now, mounted that piece of paper on the wall. <coughs> so not only was I working on different titles and combinations of objects in which to put a twist on and, and to render realistically, photorealistically, but I also started to experiment with techniques, right? To create different objects, such as the glass, the texture of the tea bag, and the watch, also the paper. So you're looking at four different textures here. So I was really getting into this realism type of work and putting my spin on it. So from there, I transitioned to more of what I'm doing today. And I continue to work on different pieces, uh, just further refining my techniques further refining my ideals of what I believe to be what is realism with a twist. So this piece right here, you have a mason jar, paintbrush. It's called the power of the brush. So the twist here is instead of putting rays of light around the brush to symbolize the power then the brush as an artist, this is like a homage to painters. What I did was I used 
paint tubes. Little tubes of paint, right? And therein lies the twist. <laughs> Another piece, one of my favorites. And you, you guys have seen this, uh, this piece on uh, IG, I posted it, is called Paper Platter. Now you might be saying, well, what's the big deal about this? Well, it's an illusion within an illusion. That's what I started to experiment with, or that's what I'm experimenting with currently, is putting realistic objects together with other objects that normally would not be combined together. Normally if you were doing a realistic version of a picture like this, these donuts are realistically rendered. Uh, I threw the jelly in there just for some contrast and just to draw your eye a little bit toward it, bring it to the platter, right? Normally I would use a glass platter or a plate or something that these donuts would sit on. I said, nah, let's do something different, Dave. So I sat and I thought and I said, well, I've been doing a lot of work with rendering paper lately. Why don't we use that in this piece? So I came up with the idea to use or to render a paper cut out paper version of the drawing of a platter and use that as the platter itself in which the donuts are sitting on. So that's the results of that one. I thought it came out pretty well. I have some work to do still. So I'm really one of those artists who are not really satisfied with <laughs> with any one particular work. So I say in general, you know, my work is continuing to evolve, um, you know, and over time I just hope to get better and better at it. So I'll show you guys one more piece. <clears throat> this one I really got a kick out of because I haven't done any paper bags or anything like that. So I had an old envelope that I got some mail in and put that down. So I rendered that whole, the entire thing. And the snail didn't come into my mind until after I was about halfway through, right? And I said, what can I add to this envelope, this old tattered mail envelope? that would be a twist. So I came up with the snail. And you say, why the snail? Well, snail mail, right? The old school, seven days, eight days, nine days, 10 days to get your mail to you, right? So that's the twist with that one. And Right now I'm working on a, a companion piece or pieces to this, uh, turned into a series, um, doing a, another envelope and you'll see the twist, right? So I'm not gonna blow it, but that's just a little bit about the evolution of my style, where I am now. Where I'm going to be going right so I'm going to continue with this and just push it as far as I can you know and, and for you guys out there I'm going to be revealing all of my techniques my mindset how I come up with these ideas and videos that I'll be putting out subsequent videos I'll be putting out in the future you know so hey if you enjoyed this video Give me the thumbs up. Leave your comments, please. Leave your comments below, whether they're positive or negative. I learn from it all. So you guys have a great day. And don't forget, 
This is my saying from uh, one of my old sergeant majors that I had in the army. He said, if it is to be, it's up to me. For I am the maker of my own destiny. So go out there, do your thing, be brilliant at it, do what you love to do and turn it into a business. And that way you'll never do a day of work. Y'all take it easy. Catch y'all in the next one. Peace.